Yeah, so as Dr. Freya mentioned in an email, I'll be in charge of the class for today and next Monday. So, yeah, that's, that's going to be fun. If, I mean, if, if I'm not that experienced as a lecturer, but if I'm going too fast or if you don't get anything, please let me know. And let's begin straight up. So we will begin by by remembering some a definition that we finished on last time. So definition. So given uh, a simple initial. complex K, and again, we mean abstract simple initial complexes when it is not specified, um, for a natural number greater than zero, we define C and K C as just the collection of functions phi from n dimensional simplices of k to c. And just as a notation of the wise, and I don't think uh, Dr. Perry mentioned this last time, uh, for any simplicial complex k, we're gonna denote by k sub n the collection of all simplices whose dimension is less or equal than n. Yeah, so for example, k zero is gonna be a collection of all zero dimensional simplices is vertices of the of the simplicial complex. K1 is gonna be all the simplices of dimension up to one, which means all the zero and one dimension, so all the edges and, and vertices on the complex, so on and so forth. And using this notation, using this keeping this notation in mind, we can think of phi of every function phi in here as a function from kn minus kn minus 1 to c. Does that make sense? So, well, what's the other one? Is it g or what are you coming over? This? Yes. C is the integer. Oh, e oh, the d, the integer. Yeah. Okay. Is it my notation here? <laughs> <laughs> Um, just making, just clarifying. So yeah. when you have k zero, that's only the zero dimensional simplices, and k up to dimension zero. So it's up to dimension zero. Yeah. So even one includes k yeah. zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure. So for example, you can think of k one as the graph of the uh, as the graph part of the of the simplicial complex. Yeah. Which because it's all the lines and all the points, yeah. not just the points. Okay. Yeah. I, exactly. I just want to make sure it was a lesson equal to not just equal to because that's. Uh, yep, yep. Less, or, less or equal to. Yeah. So everything clear? So the first thing that we can do is that we can define an addition on CN K C. And since well, it's not clear, but like we could imagine what that addition is. We're look, we looking at this as functions, so we can define uh, phi one and phi two. And the only need that we, the only thing that we need to define this function is to say how this function operates on an n simply n, on an n-dimensional complex. I'm, I'm defining, I'm, we're gonna define this as take phi one, related on C, 
on sigma plus phi two on sigma. And this addition makes sense because again, this guy is an integer and this guy is an integer as well. So this addition makes sense. Is that clear? On top of that, we can also find this, we're gonna call it a multiplication, right? Multiplication, actually by elements in C. So basically what I'm saying is that I'm gonna define the fact like for a given M in the integers and a given phi in C N K C. I'm gonna find the function M. I'm gonna use the yeah, dot phi. So I'm defining this function. And again, the way that I'm gonna find it is what telling you how it acts on n-dimensional simplices. So on an n-dimensional simplex, it's just gonna be take uh, m times of C, which again, this is just an integer, an integer, so this multiplication makes sense. Are those things more or less reasonable? So, with these two definitions or kind of facts in mind, we can basically say the following. Let's, let's try not to make it too confusing. <laughs> okay, let's say, so let's take this set and simply says, man, oh, okay, I should mention this. Uh, this object, Kn, this is called uh, the end skeleton. Okay, I'm just mentioning it because that's the usual name that it receives in, in text. So if I take the n skeleton of k and I subtract the n minus one skeleton, I can take all the elements in here, uh, sigma, I shouldn't call it n, yes I should, it's, it's gonna be confusing. So I'm gonna just list all the elements in here. And I'm gonna find the number in one, just to be one of my functions evaluated on sigma one. I'm gonna find in two to be sigma f and sigma two, so on and so forth, until I get m sub d. And this is gonna be phi and sigma sub d. And what this allows me to do is to say that for this phi, this function phi, I'm going to write it as the number m1 times the indicator function sigma1 plus m2, the indicator function sigma2 all the way to MD, an indicator function sigma D. And this may be confusing, but it just, I'm just piling up notation on top of notation. Let's just remember in the indicator function sigma J, it's basically if I evaluate any simplex sigma, any one of the simplexes in this list. This is just gonna be one if sigma i is sigma j, okay. <laughs> and it's zero as well, elsewhere. So it is just a little function that takes value one for the simplex that appears here. And since this notation is kind of redundant, 
the way that, I, that we're going to actually write this down is one sigma one and two sigma two so on and so forth and the sigma d but what i mean by this is m1 is the value that phi takes on that simplex and i'm just using the sigma one to indicate that that's the value that corresponds and what i'm thinking is about this function and basically what i'm saying here is that if i take any function in here it can be it is completely expressed or it's completely determined by the value that it takes on these simplices. Does that sound somewhat reasonable? Is that super confusing? Just one question. It's just, do we have some condition like yielding a finite infinity with n cells? Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> Basically, that the answer is, since we're working with data most of the time, all of these simplicial complexes are, are finite. But yeah, to be completely precise, if, if for some reason your simplicial complex is not finite, uh, you need to make a restriction for finite sums. Sorry, yeah, something not very clear to me yep. is that for this indicator function, we have the, it's called uh, like a sigma j, and it's uh, like this, and the sigma i. But the in that function above that one is um, yeah, uh, just a little bit, yeah, that one. We don't have, we just have the sigma one and we don't have the bracket. Or the yeah, 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 because, um, <laughs> yes. A little bit of detail, but I'm not sure. It's, it's fine, it's just that the notation can be confusing sometimes. So what I'm saying is that this is a function, mm -hmm. it looks like this. Yeah. And if I want to evaluate the function, so let's write it here, if I want to let sigma, or phi, sorry, in one, in a sigma, what I'm saying is that I have to take this sum, and oh. let the whole sum in that, so this should oh. be in one, sigma one, uh, sigma plus yes. m two, sigma, yes. and all the way to md phi, no, I made a mistake. Sigma D. <laughs> Sigma. Yeah. And that's why, like, this is the reason why we don't use this notation, because it's just a lot of letters, and I'm always going to talk about things, and I'm going to write, write them this way, just because it's easier to write, and it's less confusing than having all these indicator functions all over the place. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. So, with all these things in mind, a little remark that I should make is that remember that if I fix, like after after fixing. basically an order on the vertices. So I basically just enumerate my vertices going k0, just to use the notation. That just means that I'm giving the numbers. I'm saying I have vertices b1, b2, bn. This fixes an orientation for any n-dimensional simplex. And the orientation that it fixes is the one that you by expressing the simplex in the order given by the vertices. Does that make sense? So ju just as a reminder. So for example, if I have this, and when I'm giving when I'm giving them these names, I'm fixing this orientation. So what I'm saying is that the standard orientation for this edge is going to be B0, B1. And I'm going to note by the inverse orientation at minus B1, B0. Is that the notation in the first? 
first lines like that after fixing or what so not above like that after fixing an order on okay. the just edges let me call it yeah okay just because i should write that down because we're completely wrong <laughs> that's confusing see and order on oof. Zero. and like I, I call it like minus just because the way that I fix it or the way that we usually fix it, fix orders and sites is by just giving them like little indices. Like once I select the collection, I think it's like it's gonna work. So we want both the, the order of the indices and the upper minus sign? Uh, no, I want to say this is minus this guy. That thing, this guy. <laughs> Yeah, what I want to say is that this edge is just the inverse order of this one. They're absolutely right. I wrote slower, nobody's in my head. <laughs> Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So with that notational device in mind, it is useful to say, so I have a multiplication defined here. So what would be? I think that's a question. Could be, what would be for you guys minus phi of a simplex? Just just recall the orders? Yeah, just take the inverse orientation of the simplex. So I'm gonna be a function phi, evaluated on chain, like taking the opposite orientation of the simplex and evaluating the function on that. I mean, this is not completely clear from what I defined here, but that's what it is. Uh, okay, so let's do a little remark. So if I give you, or if I take two functions, phi1, phi2, and C and K, C, as I mentioned here, I can write it in the, I can write both of, both of those in the following manner. I can write phi1 as just a collection of integers, and I'm gonna call them M1, 1, sigma 1, M1, M2, 1, sigma 2, MD1, sigma B. And I can do a similar thing for phi 2, phi 2, 1, sigma 1, M2, 2. two. Yep. One, two, D, one, one, one. Maybe my ones are confusing. Uh, two. No. Ah. Damn. I knew that was going to happen. Two, two, one, two. That's the right thing. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I um, missed something while you were doing this, but where sure. did we actually enclose the information? Well, does um, phi have any information about orientation in it? Did I miss that? Phi? Or, yeah, does phi have orientation information in it or no? I mean, phi by definition is defined on all the simplices. Uh-huh, okay. That includes, all, like, if you take the orientation or that into account. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so it doesn't necessarily need orientation. It might have orientation, but it doesn't necessarily need it. Yeah, I'm saying. Okay. What is the MK object? The, this? Yeah. Oh, that's the object. It's, again, I erase it. Maybe it shouldn't have. It's the definition that I gave at the beginning of the class. So, let's recall. C 
and K C for a simplicial complex K is a simplicial complex. This is just the collection of all the functions that takes value in here onto the integer lattice. This may be a stupid question, but what is the sign between the two simples, uh, two cases? Uh, is is that a division? Sign? No, it's set subtraction. Oh, set. Okay. Yeah, so it's this set minus this set. Okay. I know. Because, again, so, yeah, basically what I'm saying here is only the, the n dimensional symbols. Because remember that kn are all the simplices of dimension up to n. Kn minus 1 is all the simplices of dimension up to n minus 1. So with this set difference, I'm saying take only the n dimensional ones. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not familiar with that. No, definition. it's fine, it's fine. Okay. It was, sorry, I jump around. Um, is this clear? Kind of. <laughs> More or less. So this function always take an integer number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all like whenever you evaluate this function on any n simplex, it just spits out an integer. That's where this see that, that's what this basically that's what this notation is telling me. It's telling me where do my function falls in this way. Yep. Okay, so Going back to what I was saying before, using this notational device in a sense, I can easily like, compute this thing. So I can find out that v1 plus v2 is gonna is gonna be just what's gonna be the little coefficient that goes with sigma one. So it's gonna be m1. One plus n one two, and the next one is gonna be m two one, m two two, sigma two, until m d one plus m d two, sigma d. And basically, what this is telling me is that. Any of the operations that I defined at the beginning in here, the only thing, the only information that I actually need to add up or multiply these functions are these little m's. And that's what I mean when I say that the functions, all the functions in here are completely determined by the value that they take on these sigmas. So if you see at this, what I'm saying is, if I want to add those, those any of those two functions, I just need to look at these values. So in the exam, so in like an example or something like that, are these ends like weights or something like that? Are they weights of the simplicity, or what are the end values? Give me one simple example. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going there. Don't <laughs> worry. Uh, you can think of that as as a weight on the on the corresponding signals. Yeah, yeah. So okay, that's not bad, I guess. That's one way of thinking about it. Uh, yeah, that's. I was. Yeah, let's do a simple example. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, that I give you basis example for zero. Zero, okay. B1, B2. Okay, this is my k. 
and are included in everything. It's a little too simplex. So I can define. So what is going to be C? C one K C are going to be all the functions that take values on K one minus K zero. And again, like I should, I should remember, like I should bring that. That way that we write this implicit complex is b zero, b one, b two, comma zero one, zero two, uh, one two. And zero, one, two. That's how I write the simplicial complex. So this is a function that is going to take values on all the one simplices. So it's a function that is going to take values on the collection of zero, one, zero, two, one, two and it's going to fall into C. And from what I explained before is that if, for example, I tell you like, to define any function phi, I only need to tell you its values on these four, this four, these three vertices. So I only need to tell you B0, B1, I need to tell you Two. So that zero one and two, zero two, and I can just give you values. And these numbers completely fix this function. Why are we doing this? And like, I, <laughs> I mean, like you can put you can put integer numbers, but why? Why these numbers? Well, well, I mean, I don't think it matters which particular number is specific. Oh no no! Yeah, but it's I'm asking. It does not. What? Why are we fixing numbers on the thing? No, we are not fixing. Like, after I fix these numbers, mm -hmm. I fix v. Mm -hmm. a different function. It's gonna have different values in these vertices. So this is one specific function fee. Oh, okay. Uh, but this theory doesn't apply to like if the function maps to an actual number, then it's not going to work. It is not because I cannot subtract numbers. Like remember that I define what I define what <coughs> this should be. So if you, if you think of what I was doing, I define a way to add a functions, I define a way to like multiply functions by integers. But when I'm talking about addition, when I do this, I also include subtraction. And if I map into ends, like then some of the of the subtractions are not gonna fall in the natural numbers. Does that make sense? So for example, if I were to change <coughs> this C I cannot, is it? by the natural numbers, yeah, you say, okay, this is three. Then I would like to know what is phi in uh, B0, or for example, B2, B1, plus, B zero, B one, or this is not gonna fail. Two zero. So I would like to know the value of the function phi on this simplex. Yeah. But as I just said before, so the first thing is gonna be this is gonna be phi on B zero, 
e1 up b2 b0 minus the value phi on b0 b1 so, yeah so is it wrong to think that this is the order we're putting on the second we're putting we're putting the orientation on the simplex with this mapping function no i fix the order first huh. and then i do everything so this is after the uh, yes fixing the order yeah fixing the order the first thing that comes okay and here if you were to change the order of these two i can find another combination that is going to fail let me finish this to show you that it failed. So what would be phi on this edge? Oh, minus two. Sorry? Minus two. Yeah, so it will be, uh, this is a plus. Minus three, and what is the value on this, on this edge? Plus one, so this is minus two. But this doesn't make sense, because my function phi is supposed to take values only in the natural numbers. So I cannot do only the naturals. I need more for all these little, like to be able to have a function phi well defined in all the simplices that I can think of. Yeah, so the answer is I cannot do the natural numbers. The integers are not the only thing that I can put, but I kind of the easiest, nicest thing that I can use. Yeah, so when you say integer, so you have multiply uh, addition and subtraction, or you have division? Like no, so far I haven't figured out that then I don't. <laughs> it's an integer number, uh, like uh, all, uh, it's not, it cannot be negative. Integers, yes, they can be they negative. Can be. Yeah, natural numbers cannot be negative. Yeah, exactly. So. Not really. Like for, for the people for who this means anything, and it's not most of you, you can put any groups here. And but yeah. and it's just like a weight. It's just like a weight of what this. You can is. think of that just as weights. So then you can do for real numbers. I could potentially do real numbers for sure. Yep. It's just that for our purposes. We are only, you know, we only, we are only gonna use integers. Yep. Does that kind of? No. It doesn't. Sense, I, well, it makes sense. I'm still just confused as to why we're doing it, and I feel like as you explain it, it'll become clear. <laughs> I feel like this is just relating back to homology to identifying homology. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the end goal is to find homology, and this is all machinery that is. These are just the tracks to get there. <laughs> That's all it is. Um, so, any more questions on any of this so far? Because it's gonna get a little bit confusing from this point. <laughs> and this is just one option to be, you could do infinitely many different options, correct? Infinitely many? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do any, yeah. Any number. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like once I fix the numbers, I'm fixing the function. So, questions again. Okay, let's move on to something that is gonna be, in my opinion, easier and more confusing. It's easy, but it's more confusing than what it really is. So now I'm gonna define, next big definition is the, oh, I cannot spell that, boundary operator. Boundary operator. And this is defined for any n bigger than one. I'm going to find a function uh, called partial n that takes value on c and k c and it gives me a something out in here. Yep. So I'm gonna find 
this function. And I'm gonna, and again, I will fix, before doing anything, an order on the vertices, or yeah, on the vertices of, of the simplex. And I'm gonna take an n simplicial complex. And I'm gonna express, like after fixing the order, remember, remember that, can, that I can express any n simplicial complex. Uh, and simplex by just the vertices that appear in there. Yep. And I'm going to find basically all this story should, should be hinting at the fact that I can define this function just on the end simplices. So I'm going to find it on here. And it's going to be the experimentation. Is the sum for j from 0 to m minus 1 to a j? And this is going to be take sigma and take away vj. Minus one okay. to the power of j, and then take the sigma uh, simplex and so, and take away the j vertex. So this object here is an n minus one simplex. So. So what am I doing there? Like I'm just gonna write explicitly what I'm doing. So when j is zero, what I'm saying is I'm gonna have minus one to zero, which is one, and then I'm gonna take away v zero. So I'm gonna have the simplex v one to v n. Yep. The next entry that appears in that addition is minus one to the power of one, minus, and I'm taking away V1. So here is gonna have, I'm gonna have a simple like this, V0, V2, Vn. Yep. Okay, so this minus sign means you have this step after show? This, no. This minus is this same kind of minus. I'm taking the opposite um, orientation on the simplex. Yeah, this minus simplex is our other orientation. Yep. And I can go, I can keep going. So the next entry is going to be, so it was 0 of 1, 2. So the next one is going to be uh, plus. It's going to be v0, v1. I'm taking away v2, v3, vn. And the last entry is going to be minus 1 to the n. So v0, vn minus 1. Yep. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to write something down. And this is just a standard notation that is used in the textbook for, for this operator. It's just minus one to the j, the zero, the j with a hat, the n. And what this notation means is eliminate the j vertex in the collection. And this is the notation that you're actually gonna find out in the text. So, okay, so this doesn't mean anything, honestly. <laughs> so let's do an example of what this actually looks like. Because this is a really like, geometric of, like, operator when, when we think a little bit about it. So let's 
Let's do that same example. Let's do C0, C1, C2. I have the little trail. And this is K. So I want to compute uh, delta 2 of the following simplex. B0, B1, B2. Yep. So I will follow the definition. So I'll be the first thing. It's going to be take out the zero vertex. So it's going to be B1, B2. Then the, C, the one vertex is going to come with a minus. B0, B1, no, B2. And then take the last one, B1, B0, B1. Is this clear? Like I just follow this definition. But now let's look at what this simplex actually is. So what I'm saying here is the following. The, so I'm taking B1, B2. Which is taking, oh, I should write little arrows indicating the orientation fixed by my order. So, what, I, what I'm saying here is what? Take the edge B1, B2. So, let's take this edge. Then, take the edge 0, 2 with opposite orientation. So, the orientation of 0, 2 goes from here to here. So I'm going to take the opposite orientation. And then take 0, 1 in its given orientation. 0, 1. So what I'm describing is the little border of the triangle. And that's what, that's the motivation what it is called boundary operator. Because it's taking an object, and this is an abstraction of computing the edge, or computing the boundary, as it is called. So. The definition may look artificial, but it's made to actually uh, make a concrete definition of how to compute boundaries. So let's say we have a four-dimensional simplex, and if we do this, then boundary of all three-dimensional simplices. All three-dimensional simplices? Yes. For the for 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 this one. <laughs> Let's, let, let's do a, a, a different example to see what happens. Let's see what it is. So let's do then the only next example that I can draw. Like the, the next dimension that I can draw. Which is going to be. Uh, yes, it should be a tetrahedron. Let's see if I can do it without failing completely. B0, B1, B2, B3, and <coughs> is clear what that is? <laughs> it's a little tetrahedral. Yeah. Maybe you can combine the obey E minor and obey 3 in solid line and obey 0 obey 3 in, in the dash line. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> what what is more, more common? Like a, you connect V1 and V3 in solid line. V1 and V3. Oh, you know V2. It's okay. What did you want me to put the next? Oh, so what you're saying is you want to dot the line that would be like behind the figure. Oh, yeah. this but is the line behind the... This one. In front of it, right? This one is going to be in front of it. Ah, okay. I see what you want. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's more common? Yeah. Sure. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Let's do that one. I'm sorry, I don't mean to go back, but sure. in your example that you have over there, yep. why does the arrow from B0 to B2 facing in that direction? Shouldn't it be the opposite because you're using B1 to make it negative? Which one? Uh, the air from between B0 and B2, the simplex from B0 to B2. So you have that negative, right? So does it, it usually goes from B0 to B2, but since it's negative, shouldn't it be faced the opposite way? No, no, no. So the arrows that I'm drawing, Okay. Are the orientations fixed by the initial ordering of the 
of the earth. Oh, I'm sorry. So you yep. already had it. You had it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, didn't this, you didn't have the canonical one where you had zero to no. one, zero to two. Okay. I'm, I'm, what I'm just saying is that what this is giving you is kind of a way to read out the derivation. So it's telling you go from if you can if you want to think about it, go from one to two. Okay. Go from zero to two in the opposite direction, okay. and then go from zero to one. Okay. If you want to read it that way. Okay. So like uh, you mean. No matter what uh, condition I have, I mean the direction of each each i, based on this uh, boundary operator, I always have uh, one direction <coughs> loop of the out of the parameter. Or no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying for this example. <laughs> well, this example <laughs> yeah. Have, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm saying for this specific example, I'm obtaining something that looks. But I'm I'm just saying that the sign that appears here mm -hmm. is kind of telling you how to move. Across the across the one simplices that appear here, but they don't have to form a loop. They don't have to. Okay. Direction. Like yeah. All the things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying anything on that. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just trying to give an intuition of what the minus. Okay. Means. I see, I see. But it's not for everything, and not all of. Not any. Not the, the one that we finish simplex is not going to look like this. Okay. Yes. Thanks. So let's do this example. So let's compute delta three, I think, yeah. of the whole thing, B2, B3. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to write it down, B1, B2, B3, uh, minus B zero, B two, B three, plus zero, B one, B three, minus. I think I'm doing this right. <laughs> B zero, B one, B two. Yep. And then again, this here follows just from the definition. <coughs> now the interesting thing is to see what the rotation means in this case. So once I fix this, like from the beginning, I fix the ordering, the ordering of the vertices. And then again, that gives me like little orientations on all the 0, 2, 0, 3. That gives me orientations in all the edges. And that also gives me orientations on all the faces. So for example, Let's see what this is telling me to do. So this is telling me to take the face, or the two simplex, B1, B2, B3, and keep its positive orientation. Does that make sense? Then let's take 0, 2, 3. What is 0, 2, 3? I hope that's and the easy one. Yeah. 0, 2, 3. And it's taking the negative orientation of that one. And so on and so forth. And the thing that we obtain in this case is we now just all the four little faces of the tetrahedron with the right orientation that are always going to be pointing out. If you think a little bit about it. <laughs> yes? No? Kind of? Out? No, out? <laughs> there, like, you do the wrong, like you're thinking. If you do the right hand uh, thingy, like when you're learning physics or <laughs> calculus trick, it's gonna fall. Like if you follow. <laughs> so, for example, for one, two, three, you wanna do what is it? It's one of this. Yes, it's gonna be this one, and it's gonna go that way. So, I'm taking B1, B2, and we're in, now I'm taking. One of these, how oh, is this so hard all the time? I'm not a physicist, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. But I assure you that it has the right orientation, and just all the arrows are, are pointing out outside, all the normals. I may fail with my right hand, so yes. <laughs> so the orientation here would be a vector, like not, but like an arrow pointing out. Or yeah, what is the orientation of a face? It's selecting yeah. what is outside. Where is inside? 
So their intention, yeah, they should have mentioned that. that or is their intention of an edge is telling me what is right and what is left? Yeah, so I'm telling you this is right, and the other way is left. Their intention for us for a fence is telling me what's outside and what is inside of the fence. Then it should be a deal to five points. A deal to three of them. Sorry? Oh. Why is it why, why is it a delta three? So let's look at the definition. It goes from the simplicity of dimension three to the simplicity of dimension two. And a simplex of dimension three is a collection of four uh, four vertices. So the question is that in this example it goes the V1 to V3 is the direction is from V1 to V3 yeah. the edge. So if you do if you assume the direction is from V3 to V1, how do you decide the direction of this function? I mean how do you use the right hand number? Yeah, the problem is that when I name them like this, yes. I fix this orientation. If I wanted to change the orientation, for example, of this edge, yes. I'll have to change the way that I named them. Oh. And that will change this guy, and I that see. will change this computation. Okay, so the rule you follow is like, uh, for example, it's a zero of three. If it's zero is smaller than three, the direction yep. will be zero. Yeah, yeah. Three. yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Left and right and L and N when it comes to, like, I understand. So it's basically all out and in. Yeah. But uh, how do you determine out and in from uh, n minus one dimension? Does that yeah. make sense? <laughs> it does make sense. Like there is. Uh, like, uh, so for example, like on the v0, v1, v2 uh, face on the bottom of the tetrahedron. The zero, v1, v2. Yeah. Is that pointing down yeah. or, up or in, out, out or inside? Out. out. <laughs> I guess I'll it, out. it does. Uh, can I do it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That. It's. <laughs> I always do it wrong. So. So. Let me think about it. And I can, I can make sure to give you the right. <laughs> so, no, no, no. Like I, I, I get where this is going. I'll probably keep getting it wrong because I always get confused with my hands. But it's going to be right. But you'll have to think what is in this orientation. But it's fine. <laughs> um, OK, let's do more examples of this. Sigma prime, and I want to compute delta two of sigma minus three times sigma prime. Yep. So, as I mentioned, this operator is defined in the basic exit and simplices, and the way to extend it to like combinations of those is just by computing each little part. And let's do what this is. I'm gonna copy it here because I'm gonna say zero one. 
Okay, I know, I think we can do it. So we have C, it's gonna be zero, one, plus one, two, and maybe three, two, three, one, two, and two. So zero, one, one, two, minus zero, two, minus two times is a, B, one, two, three, one, three, minus two, three, plus, or minus B1, B2. Yes. No. Yes. I think. Did I, did I do something wrong? That's minus three. One, three. Two, three, one, two. No, it's right. <laughs> so that one is the, the second and last, is it? Yeah. Uh, is it minus zero one and two? No, above that one. In the middle. In the middle. Yeah, yeah the last letter. Uh, this? Yeah, it's minus zero two. So again, it's sigma. So it's zero to one, uh -huh. one to two, uh -huh. and zero to two in the opposite direction. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter at all, it's me too, right? Oh, yes, 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 yes. me too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> so if we do all the adequate additions of this thing, you're gonna get oops, zero, one, minus one, two, minus zero, two, Times two, three, one, minus two, three, I'm gonna say one, two, like this. And let's think what this is. So what I'm saying that this is and this uh, simplex is let's we have zero one in the right direction. We have one, two in the opposite direction. We have zero, two yeah. in the opposite direction. So I have zero, two, zero, two. Yes. Then I have two, three. I have one of these. And it's like I have it two times, and both of them are going in the wrong direction. Or the opposite, they're in the wrong direction. And then I have one, three, and I have two copies of this guy, and they are going again in the wrong direction. So this is also an answer to your question that, do they all just look nice like this? They do not. Depending on the thing that you start with, they're gonna look kind of messy and complicated. They're not gonna be that easy to to see, like on your face. Mm -hmm. Have the definition there. So. so now let's do. the little triangle, B0, B1, B2. Makes sense what I'm writing, I'm just like, <laughs> tired of giving it names. So basically I'm gonna first I'm gonna compute delta two of this guy, and then I'm gonna compute delta one of that guy. So we already computed this. We know that this is B0, B1, plus B1, B2, minus B0, B1. Yep. Now, what is, oh, there's a one here. 
Now I'm gonna compute delta one of each one of these guys. So what is delta one of this? It's take out. That would give you minus b one in the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it, it's always a little bit confusing. So let's do the first one carefully. So, so I take away zero, and that has a minus one to the zero, which is a positive one. So I get b one minus b zero. Which again, if you if we think of what this is doing is we have this edge on, with this orientation, and I'm saying the end minus the beginning. That's always what it's doing. So keep that in mind, the next one should be B2 minus B1. And this one should be minus B1 plus B0. Yep. Yeah. And this adds up to zero. I think. I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, we have two B0, B1, so one of them should be B0, B2. Ah, this is the one that I always go wrong. Like this. That seems better. Yeah, so I have one, one, I have two, and two, and I have zero and zero. And they do eliminate. And let's do oh, a final example, and I'm gonna recycle one of my drawings. I'm just taking the simplex off. And, sorry? <laughs> That's fine. And let's take, let's think of different simplexes. So, let's put on B1. B2, B2, B3, plus B1, B3. B1, B2, B2, B3, minus B1, B3. B0, B1, B1, B2, So let's think about what these, all these chains are, okay? So what can we say about this first chain? So let's look at it. It is given by uh, one, two, two, three. Okay, it's going to, yes. So it is one, two, two, three in the right direction, and one, three. Yep. Oh, I guess I should have. It was confusing before. It's going to be confusing now. <laughs> I'm gonna say that a little chain like this is a cycle. If it is just a collection of simplices that begin at one place and they then end at the same place. So for example, this chain here, as I did before, it, it goes from B1 to B2, 
from B0, so from B2 to B0, and from B0 to B1. So if you look at it, it's like doing a little cycle, loopy thing. And whenever a collection of simplices do that, I'm going to call them a cycle. So let's see, is this a cycle? <coughs> Why not? It's not going by B1. It's not going. So what's failing? What's failing? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so this little piece makes this not a cycle. Cycle. Is this a cycle? Yes. 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 This one is a cycle. Does this chain enclose as a whole? This is not only a cycle, but it has a hole in the middle. What about this one? Is this a cycle? Yes. Does it enclose a hole? Yes. Oh, wait, no, it's not. That's it? It's a gap under the faces. Yeah. It doesn't enclose a little hole because I have the face in here. Yeah. So this is a cycle, but it's not a hole. What about this one? Is it a cycle? Is that V0 to V0? Which one? No. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a two. Damn. Why so, this is so hard? Zero, two, two, three, one, three, zero, one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 No? Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's the outermost. It's square. square. So it is a cycle. Is it a hole? Yes. There's a hole. It's so part of it's a hole. Yeah, it has like it has a hole in the middle. So it does. Okay, yeah. And and there's a lot of things that we can say out of this example. Not is that we can have cycles. And so things can be cycles. But not all cycles are holes, have holes in them. So we, we can have cycles with holes, or cycles that are fill in, this example by this face. And if we pay attention to what these two chains are doing, so both of them are enclosing essentially the same hole in the complex, even though they look different. No, because one of them is this, and the other one is this. But the cycle that they contain is essentially the same cycle, the same hole, sorry. Sorry about the question. So for example, this one, how V0 to V1, V1 to V2, and V2 back to V0 is a, is a cycle. I mean, so if I do V0 to V1 and V1 to V3, and then go back from V0 to V1, V1, V1 to V3, V3, and V3 go back to V1, yep. yeah, and V1 to go to V2, like this. And, the, and the total yeah. zero, is that a cycle still? It's just something else. That's not a cycle. It's not a cycle? <laughs> because it doesn't end when you began. It what? didn't end. So what you said was go be zero, be one, uh -huh. be one, be three, yeah. and go back, uh -huh. and then do this. No, no, I don't be, go to be two. Uh, and, then, and then go back to be zero. Uh, if, yeah. That is a cycle. That's not, if that's a cycle, even if something else, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you're doing, what you're describing is do this. Yes. Do this. No. no. Do this. Yeah. Go back. back. Yeah. Go up. And go this. Yes. Yeah, that's a cycle because I ended at the same point. Okay. Does it have a hole? Yeah. No. No, because it didn't. Like, no, 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 no. I have this face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to. You can't, can you define where, like, a hole would 
for this arithmetic at all then? That I define? Like with the boundary operator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. That's, that's where we are going with this. <laughs> um, yes, that's exactly what we are going with this. <laughs> That is right on point. So, where I'm going with all of this is to us following definitions. So, you're going to change phi in C and K, C. Yes. I say that. When I say that phi is a cycle, if and only if, if, only if delta n of phi is zero. Um, yes. What this means is just that phi is in the kernel of delta n. And as notation, you're going to call all the, we're going to call all the elements in here. We're going to denote this by C and K. We are going to call the elements here, here cycles or n cycles. And two, I'm going to say that phi is a boundary if 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 I can find a c in C n plus one k c such that delta m plus one of phi nope of c is phi. Yes, okay. and just an a. <laughs> And again, you're going to denote by, I don't know where I go. Ah, I'm in a pico. Let go right here. Just because I don't know if I'm, now I'm not going to be able to, let me see. Is it going to take too much time, too long? So what does it mean by what do I mean by? By K. No, I'm saying what is, what is the definition of kernel? This is taking to the left. Yeah, it's so it it's a collection of all the elements. Okay, so the kernel of delta n are basically all the elements in the domain of this function, which is C N K C such that they are mapped to zero. I shouldn't call it phi because it's very confusing. Give me another a different phi. Yep. So the function delta n, it goes from, I erase it. So delta n, it goes from cn, uh, k, c, to Cn minus 1 Kc. So the kernel of this are all the elements here that are mapped to 0. And all those elements, I'm going to call them cycles. And just for the sake of notation, because it is standard in, in books, they are denoted as this. And what I'm saying here, sorry. What I'm saying here is that phi is contained 
basically in the image of delta n plus 1. And the image of a function is just all the elements in here that I can hit with my function. And I'm going to call this b n k c. Yes. Why the V? Because boundary. And why the C? Because I think cycle in German or something like that is the reason. Again, cycles, boundaries. Does that sound? I mean, those are those, these are those like definitions. But again, what you should think when you're thinking of cycles is what I described before, which is just like these little collections of n simplices that like start at some point and they end up closing eventually after doing all the path that is being described. Can you see the part two side? What is the side? Yeah, so. Is that just the only Is the element side? is the element that is mapped into oh. into a field that I begin with. But does P, in this case, are you keeping P as a notation of a cycle? Or is that not? No, 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 P is just an element here. Right. Just okay, but it's, and then, okay, so that's just a cycle and then. Yeah, yeah. And I begin with a general element here. I call it a cycle if it is in this kernel, and I call it a boundary if it is in this image. That peer, kind of, somewhat, <laughs> somehow. Okay, yeah, I cannot, I cannot do it like in four minutes on this thing. Uh, next Monday we'll be in charge of class again, but we'll have a computational kind of exercise. So I will, we will ask you guys to install Python and to bring your laptops. And please tell the people that left, if you know them, to please bring their laptops with Python installed. And we'll make a, all, like a little guide to, if you're not familiar to Python, at least to how to install it and how to make it work. Are we going to be using a Jupyter notebook? We're going to be using Jupyter notebooks. So, if you're not familiar with that, I already wrote a little guide. So, like, just a small walkthrough on how to start and how to make it work. If you have problems with that, you can always mail me and I can help you figure it out if you're not experienced with that kind of stuff. So, please bring your laptop. Next one. So, thanks, guys.
I see, I see. So, as long as you're from 